Hey guys, Pepperami here. Just quickly, I want to say sorry for no video last week. With all the stuff that's happened in non-YouTube land for the past couple of weeks, I just needed to take a personal week off where I didn't have to worry about doing a video, editing, uploading, etc. Just to chill, relax, take things in. Now with that out of the way, this week we are taking a look at IKEA's iconic Swedish meatballs. Now, with the virus that has been going around, IKEA released their meatball recipe, or at least a meatball recipe. I don't know if it is their one. It would be a little bit weird to release their, like, you know, ultra secret one. But it's, from what I can tell, fairly close. And thanks to a friend of the channel, H412, who told me about this recipe, I've printed off a copy and wanted to give it a bash. Now, as this is a IKEA recipe, there is some assembly required. Now, I have my trusty IKEA toolbox nearby, and I am ready to start. Now, for the meatballs, you want to combine 500 grams of beef mint and 250 grams of pork mint in a bowl and give a good mix with your fingers to break up any lumps. Then add in 100 grams of breadcrumbs, 5 tablespoons of milk, preferably whole milk, 1 crushed clove of garlic, one egg. Now the hard part about cracking the egg is to not hit it too hard with your hammer. Now I'm using two eggs as I'm using one kilogram of mint as the recipe calls for 750 and I can't actually find like a middle ground mint. I can only buy it in 500 or one kilograms at the shop. So that just means that I ended up with some extra meatballs and I'm sure this totally won't be an issue later on when it comes to cooking these. And then finally, add in a chopped onion. Now, while using a hammer to chop my onion, I ended up with some fairly large chunks. So you may want to use a knife instead, as this is a lot more practical for cutting an onion. Then add your onion to the bowl with a good amount of black pepper and a good pinch of salt and mix together with a utensil or your hands. Now working your meat by hand is always better as it's easier to mix. Now you may find the mint is really really cold if you've just taken it out of the fridge and if you've got joint problems this could cause discomfort so use a utensil instead. Next, shape your meatballs. The go to way I do it is pinch some of the mixture in my hand, give it a good squeeze and gently roll it around to form a nice firm ball. And then you want to place it in the fridge for about two hours. This will help them set up and firm up in the fridge. Now, being the well-prepared YouTube home cook that I am, I totally read this recipe beforehand and totally let mine rest in the fridge for two hours before cooking them. Yeah, that's a lie. Next, in a frying pan, or if you have one, a cast iron skillet, heat some oil and gently brown the meatballs. Now you want to make sure they get a nice browning on all sides, and this is where my problem came in. I had too many balls. But luckily, Tiny Whisk's Tiny Frying Pan friend helped me out, and I managed to get the last three meatballs in that instead. Now the reason I suggested to use a cast iron pan is because once the meatballs are browned you need to place them covered with either a lid or tin foil in a 180 degree celsius or 360 degree fahrenheit oven for 30 minutes just to finish them off. So this is where cast iron comes in because it saves washing up an extra oven proof dish. Now whilst the meatballs are cooking, it's time for the iconic Swedish cream sauce. Now start by melting 40 grams of butter in a pan and then whisk in 40 grams of plain flour. Then you want to whisk and cook this for around 2 minutes. Now recently I have been using 00 flour, which is a really really fine flour mainly for pasta and some breads. And if you have some laying around, it is a amazing flour to use to make a base for a sauce as it almost guarantees a completely lump free base. Then next you want to add in 150ml of beef stock and then 150ml of vegetable stock. 
making sure to stir and mix so the roux becomes combined with the stock and you don't end up with, once again, a lumpy sauce. Then add in 150 ml of double cream, two teaspoons of soy sauce, this is mostly to darken it and to add a bit of saltiness to the sauce, and a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Then just bring that all to a simmer and let the sauce thicken. Now as a note, here in Denmark our mustards are quite strong and this sauce is better off with a fairly mild one as the sauce is quite mild and if you do use a strong Dijon mustard, even a teaspoon is gonna permeate through that whole sauce and be quite a defining feature in it. So try and find a nice mild Dijon instead. Then when you're ready to eat, serve with your favourite potatoes, either creamy mash or boiled new potatoes. Now I went for some creamy mash, just simply cut some potatoes, boil them until soft, you can do this whilst the meatballs are cooking. Now if you have been around this channel for long enough, you will know I am a skin on kind of guy when it comes to cooking vegetables. Just simply wash the potatoes, cut any bad parts off and boil in some lightly salted water. Once your potatoes are soft and easily pierced by a knife, simply drain, add in some salt, pepper, a dash of cream if you've got some left over, some butter, and I added in a teaspoon of paprika just to give it a nice kind of red shade to it and a little bit of extra flavour. Then give a good mash. Now once again, when it comes to mash, I do like my mash with some good texture, hence why I also keep the skin on for the mash. Now if you over mash your potatoes, the starches will make it almost gluey in texture and quite weird to eat. And now for the taste test. Now the meatballs are nice but nothing really new here, it's just kind of a basic meatball that you would normally serve with a tomato sauce. But when you combine it with this IKEA Swedish sauce, it is a absolute game changer. I'm used to my meatballs being in either a tomato sauce or even a cheap gravy. If you grew up in the UK, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those cans of meatballs in that gravy that could only really be described as cat food. And looking back on them now, I probably wouldn't even serve them to my cat. But in all seriousness, the sauce is what truly makes this dish stand out. I've never personally had IKEA meatballs when I've been to IKEA, but maybe next time I go there I'll check them out. But anyway, that wraps up this week's video. If you've enjoyed, let me know down below with a like and a comment. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe for weekly cooking content. I'll also try and put a link in the description below to the recipe picture, and hopefully I will see you all again next week. Thanks for watching.